Continuation, Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 4, page 120. Chapter 7, 4. Faith is knowing that God your Father is faithful, love, good, is willing to use His power to meet your desires, and is not slow concerning His promises. Many people try to work their faith. They think they have to strain at it to violently draw things from God. They even believe faith is a currency that we use to buy things from God or to get things from God. I, Jerry, when I was a spiritual babe, also thought that faith was a currency to buy things from God. It was a good example to help people understand how things work in the spiritual realm using everyday life examples. Unfortunately, people who used that example were overpowered by the greed, even the spirit of Balaam and Mammon. They started to associate faith directly with money and started to tell people the bigger the amount of money that they put into the offering plate, the bigger their faith was. The same thing happened with the seed. Initially, the intention on teaching on the seed was noble, for everything in the kingdom of God is in seed form, and then it grows. And there is a concept of sowing and reaping in the kingdom. But, unfortunately, very soon the people who used that example of the seed were overpowered by greed and associated the seed with money. And now when you turn on Christian television, they are always asking you, sow your seed, sow your seed of faith, plant your seed into this ministry for it is good soil, asking for your money. Jesus tells us the seed is the word of God, Luke 8 verse 11, and the soil is your heart. For the seed of the word of God is sown in your heart, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, deliverance, prosperity, and healing. Romans 10 verse 10 Do not hate people who have abused the example of faith being a currency of heaven, or people who have abused the example of the seed. Those who used those examples initially had noble motives, but over the years greed crept in. Christians should not hate anybody. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. 1 John 2 verse 9 He who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John 2 verse 11. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For if he does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? 1 John 4 verse 20. So pray for them, love them, but hate the sin, even the financial manipulation they are using. We try to use only scriptural examples as much as possible so that we will not fall into the same traps of greed. It can happen to anybody. So pray for Jerry as well that he will not fall into financial manipulations too. First of all, you cannot buy anything from God. Paul explains it to us. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up to die on the cross for us all. How shall he not with Jesus also freely give us all things? Romans 8 verse 32 So when you receive Jesus with Jesus, you also freely received all things. Peter tells us, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 What can you buy from God if he freely gave you all things, not some things, but freely all things that pertain to life and godliness? Paul tells us, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12 
Jesus himself tells us, freely you've received, freely give. Be it salvation of the souls, the preaching of the gospel, the healing, the deliverance, the raising of the dead. It is free. Matthew 10, verse 7 to 8. We are also not ignorant that though the preaching of the gospel is free, the healings are free, the signs and wonders are free, yet it costs money to print materials, to travel, to do mission, to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, etc. And Paul told us, Do you not know that those who minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? and those attending the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so, the Lord ordained those announcing the gospel to live from the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 13 to 14 Please read the Bible study on biblical prosperity to have a sound teaching on the subject of finances in the kingdom of God. So, if faith is a currency that we use to buy things from God, then God will be a liar since he said he freely gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 I have already confessed that I, Jerry, once spoke and thought that faith was a currency, but when I saw the abuses done with that example, I cried out unto the Lord for a scriptural example to help believers. So I am not putting anybody down. If you still use the example of faith being a currency of heaven and are able to avoid the financial manipulations that have crept in with that teaching, you will do well. Yet I am showing you a better and scriptural example which cannot be peddled or adulterated by man's greed. Why should we buy things that already belong to us? So faith is not a currency. Isaiah said, Ho, everybody who thirsts come to the waters, and you who have no money come buy and eat. Yes, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Isaiah 55 verse 1 Can you put a price on the death of Jesus? How much money do you have to buy the life of Jesus? Everything that pertains to our life and our godliness, we received it through the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. You cannot buy it. I know it sounds good when we liken faith to a currency of heaven, to buy things from God, but it is not. Jesus never taught it that way, nor did his disciples, for God has already given us everything freely. Paul says, but without faith it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6 Our problem is, when we read this verse, we think, since we are talking about reward, therefore faith is a currency. The problem is, if you think faith is a currency, you will try to work at it, to get things from God. You'll try to do the good deeds of the law, to pray long enough, to fast long enough, to get your reward or wage from God. And you will be thinking, when I am doing all those good deeds of the law, I am putting some faith currency into heaven, so that when I have enough faith currency in the bank of heaven, I can buy something from the storehouse of God. It sounds good, but faith is not that. All things are already yours as a son, so why do you want to buy what is already yours? Luke 15 verse 31 and 1 Corinthians 3 verse 22 to 23. We must think like Jesus thought and like the apostles thought. It is a family relationship. You are sons and daughters of God. You belong to the household of God. You live under the same roof with God the Father and your elder brother Jesus. Paul tells you, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Ephesians 2 verse 19
In that story of the prodigal son in Luke 15, the prodigal son did not have to buy his inheritance from his father. The father gave him his inheritance freely. When the elder brother was complaining that he had served the father all those years and the father had never given him a calf to kill for parting with his friends, the father told him, All that I have is yours. Faith is what we do that pleases our father. When we act like our father expects us to act, when we say what our father expects us to say, when we do what our father expects us to do, it pleases our father. John tells us, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3 verse 22 we have already explained what it means to please God or to delight in the Lord, according to the Scriptures. It is to keep His commandment, to hate evil, and depart from it, to practice righteousness. He acts on the Word of God, embraces the sanctified life of Jesus, His truth, and His way. So, when a person says he has faith in God, or believes in God, that is what he does. When I was growing up, we always had food in our house, and in the deep freezer we always had baguettes, at least 40 every week. Having breakfast or lunch was never a reward. When we wanted breakfast, we would open the deep freezer and take as many baguettes as we wanted. That was faith. We believed that our parents were good parents who provided everything we ever needed for our breakfast. We believed that they were good parents who would never allow their children to suffer hunger. We believed that our parents were faithful to their words when they said to us there is always food in the deep freezer and fridge. It was so. They were trustworthy parents. So Jesus told the Canaanite woman that healing was the bread of the children. Matthew 15 verse 26 David said, I have been young. And now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Psalm 37 verse 25 I never begged my parents to receive anything from them. So if you do not realize this father-son relationship, you will think faith is hard. Whenever I opened the deep freezer to take something, it pleased my parents because they knew that we believed they were loving parents, they were faithful to their words, trustworthy and good. So, when we come to God for healing, Jesus tells us we are like the children who come to their father and are asking for bread. They know that there is bread in the house because their father said so. They do not have to beg him to take it, and in fact, they can just go and take it, since all things are theirs. And the father is pleased. When I was growing up, our parents forbade us to take money from anybody, or to ask for money from anybody without their approval. They told us they were our parents, and it was their responsibility to provide for us. If someone else wanted to give us some money, they must give their approval first. So, in my heart, I believed that they would be faithful to their words, because they were my parents. They loved me. They were trustworthy and good. God our Father says the same thing, that He is the Lord our Provider, Jehovah Jireh. Paul understood it and said to the church, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 19 Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Philippians 4 verse 6 that is why I never make my financial requests known to anybody but God, for they are not my source, but the Lord said He will provide all my needs in the place of prayer. Faith is to believe. Your Father God loves you. He is always good. He is trustworthy and He will be faithful to His words. The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knows those who trust in Him. Nahum 1 verse 7 
The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Psalm 145 verse 9 That is why Jesus said, If you have the faith of a size of mustard seed, you will move mountains. When I was living in the house of my parents, I was careful for nothing. Why? Because I knew whatever I needed, they provided. I did not even need to ask for certain things. I just went and helped myself. And it pleased my parents, for they saw that we believed they loved us. They were good, they were trustworthy, and they were faithful to their words. Faith is what we do, say or think, that pleases the Father, that shows Him that we believe He is love, He is good, He is trustworthy, and He is faithful to His words. When I believe God for prosperity and act accordingly, for faith without works is dead, it pleases the Father, for He already said it is mine. All His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 Many people do not have parents who say yes to them. When they ask for something, their parents always say, I will think about it and let you know. So they spend all night waiting and wondering whether their father will say yes or no. They think that God is like their parents, who never say yes to them, but is still thinking about what they asked him. Some other people had divorced parents, so whenever they came to their father and asked for something, the father would answer, I have nothing for you, go and ask your mother. She left with all the money when she divorced me. And even when they are grown up and have their own children who are already in university, they still believe that God is like their earthly father who said those words to them. My prayer is that no matter how your earthly father was relating to you, you will read your Bible and renew your mind and see God the way he portrayed himself in the Bible. And in return you will be able to relate with your own children the way God relates with us. It is never too late. You might not have had the best parents, but you can be that best parent for your children and not relate to them like your father or mother related to you, but like God relates to you according to the scriptures. When we were growing up in my parents' house, we knew what was forbidden, what was allowed. We knew if we asked certain questions, our father would say yes, because he already told us what our boundaries were. And many times when we knew the kind of question they would always say yes to, we would go ahead and take the initiative of doing it and report back to them. And our parents were happy because we took initiative. It pleased them because we were growing up. We knew their will and acted on it. They no longer had to tell us everything, but we could work hand in hand with them to run the house. We were laborers together with them in the house. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 It is the same thing in the kingdom of God. All the promises of God are yes and amen, as long as it lines up with the word of God, they are yes, and so be it. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 So we can act on them even without asking God. That is faith, and it pleases God, because we are growing up to the full stature of his son Jesus. We can be about our father's business in the field. Luke 2 verse 49 Peter saw the lame man at the gate beautiful asking alms. He knew it was always God's will to heal. He knew Jesus had paid for the healing. So he took the initiative to heal the lame man. He did not even pray to God. God, do you want this person healed? God would have said yes. So he went ahead and healed him in the name of Jesus. Acts 3 and it pleased God, for he believed God so loved that lame man that he gave Jesus to die on the cross for his healing and the forgiveness of his sins, that God was good all the time, and healing was just an expression of his goodness. And above all, God is trustworthy and faithful to his words. He sent them to heal the sick, so he watches over his words to perform them. Jeremiah 1 verse 12 That is faith. 
The name of Jesus is faithful. These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, Revelation 3 verse 14. Many times when we are acting on the word of God, we feel like what God asked us to do is impossible and we feel like we will never be able to do it. The problem is not how we feel. Our feelings will lie to us and we must stand on the word of God and believe that God is faithful. Moses felt he was not the one God should send to deliver Israel and argued a lot with God. Exodus 3 Gideon felt he was not the one God should send to deliver Israel from the Midianites, for in his own eyes he was the least of his father's house, and his clan was the smallest. Judges 6 Abraham and Sarah laughed at the promise, for they looked at their ages. It was impossible for them to conceive again. Genesis 17 verse 15 to 22 and Genesis 18 verse 9 to 13 Keep doing what God tells you to do, even if you do not feel like you have faith. Faith is not a feeling. We see with Abraham, Gideon and Moses, God was faithful and did exactly what he promised. Paul says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? God forbid! Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. Romans 3, verse 3 to 4. And we have seen what Abraham, Moses and Gideon felt. Their moment of unbelief did not prevent the promise of God from coming to pass. The God who called you is faithful, and he will also do what he has promised you. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 24. The Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the Holy Prophet sent his angel to show to his servants the things which must shortly be done. Revelation 22 verse 6 As a man's name is, so is he. 1 Samuel 25 verse 25 Jesus' name is faithful, so Jesus is faithful. He will never deny himself. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 Keep your part of the bargain by being pleasing in the sight of the Lord, according to the Scriptures, and He will grant you the desires of your heart. When God rewrites your story, He does not remember the moments you doubted, the moments you were faithless, and the moments you laughed at His promises, for they seemed like idle tales to you at the time He spoke them. In Hebrews 11, Abraham, Sarah and Gideon are all listed as heroes of faith. So shall you be listed as a hero of faith in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. For God is faithful and will do what he promised, as you willingly purpose in your heart to do the things that are pleasing in his sight, according to the Holy Scriptures. Let God be true, and every man, every temptation, every circumstance a liar. We do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, or subject to change, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 some Christians have no problem believing that God is powerful and he can do anything. But they have a problem believing that God is willing to use his power to help them. That is religion. Religion does not doubt the existence of God or his powers, but it doubts his willingness to use his power to meet our personal need. 
Jesus wants to destroy that religious view of God in the minds of the people, that he has done his best to make us believe that God is our Father in heaven and we are his children. Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. Jesus illustrates in many ways that God, our Heavenly Father, is always willing to use His power to meet whatever need or heart desire we have. Psalm 37 verse 4 and John 15 verse 7 he knows we believe that God is powerful and able to do anything, but he knows we are struggling to believe the willingness of God to use his power for us. If we keep our part of the deal in doing the things that are pleasing in the sight of God, according to the Holy Scriptures, he will grant us the desires of our hearts. So he told us, let me tell you how God is able to meet all your needs, but is also willing to do so because he is your father in heaven. What man is there of you if his son asks a loaf, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then... Being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Matthew 7 verse 8 to 11 You see, if even the unsaved and at times wicked earthly parents are willing to give good things to their children because it is in the power of their hand to do so, how much more your Father in heaven, who is righteous and there is nothing too hard for him to do, will he not be much more willing to give you whatever you ask him according to his written word? Especially when you are doing things which are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3 verse 21 to 22 Now I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For each one who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it shall be opened. Matthew 7 verse 7 to 8 to illustrate the willingness of God to use his power to avenge us from our adversary the devil, Jesus explains to us again, saying, Man always ought to pray and not lose heart. A certain judge was in a certain city, not fearing God nor respecting man. And a widow was in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary, and he would not do so for a time. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, that she not wear me down in the end. Luke 18 verse 1 to 5 Now our adversary is the devil who walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 He comes but to steal, kill, with sickness, disease and premature death and to destroy people's lives with sins and addictions, destroy people's marriages, destroy people's businesses, destroy people's studies and careers, etc. John 10 verse 10 But see in the example of that wicked earthly judge who did not fear God nor regard men what he said and how he avenged that widow. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry day and night to him, though he has been long-suffering over them? Luke 18 verse 6 God, who is your Father, is the judge of the supreme court of heaven. He is the lawgiver, he is the king, and he will save and deliver you. Isaiah 33 verse 22 you are his son or his daughter. He hates it when anybody touches you. He says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Psalm 105 verse 15 And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry day and night to him, though he has been long suffering over them? I say to you that he will avenge them speedily, yet when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Luke 18 verse 7 to 8 Yes, this is the real question. 
Will he find people who believe that God their Father is faithful, is love, is good, and is always willing to use his power to meet your desires, and is not slow concerning his promises? When a person stops believing, he says within himself, What is the point of trying to please God again? Let me eat and drink, live in sin like the world, for tomorrow we all die. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 32 What is the point of praying at least one hour as Jesus commanded us? Matthew 26 verse 40 For I do not see how my deliverance will come. What is the point of serving the Lord in spirit and truth? For it seems it has been in vain. It is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we kept his ordinance to be pleasing in his sight, and that we have walked like mourners in fasting before the Lord of hosts? Malachi 3 verse 14 Jesus tells us, Do not be discouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord in the midst of your trouble like David, the man after my own heart did. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 Do not stop serving me in spirit and truth, keeping my commandments and doing the things that are pleasing in my sight. And do not stop praying. You always ought to pray no matter what. I will avenge you speedily of your adversary. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret, in a dark place of the earth. I did not say unto the seed of Jacob, Seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Isaiah 45 verse 18 to 19 for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Hebrews 6 verse 10 to 11 God is able and willing to avenge us from the oppression of our adversary, the devil. For he said to us, his redeemed, The day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Isaiah 63 verse 4 Paul reassures us, saying, It is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Romans 12 verse 19 it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews 10 verse 31 The devil himself also believes that the day of the vengeance of the Lord is coming upon him, and he trembles. James 2 verse 19 People will say, God is slow to answer. That is a lie of the enemy to discourage us. Nowhere in the Bible is it written that God is slow to answer or to deliver us. But from the very words of Jesus, God will avenge his own elect, you and me, from the oppression of our adversary, the devil, speedily. Luke 18, verse 7 to 8. And Peter hammered the point home, saying, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 So if we do our part of pleasing the Lord, or delighting in the Lord according to the Holy Scriptures, by hating evil and departing from it, practicing righteousness, keeping his commandments, embracing the sanctified life of Jesus, his truth and way, God will give us whatever we ask and desire. 1 John 3 verse 20 to 22 Some people, after they believe that God is powerful to meet their needs and willing to use his power to give them the desires of their hearts, have been deceived by adversary the devil to believe that God is slow concerning his promises and that he will not act speedily on their behalf. And as a result they have given birth to an Ishmael instead of an Isaac. Father Abraham was of the kind. It happens a lot in healing or in prosperity, etc. 
People do not trust that God will come speedily to avenge them, so they do things in the flesh, or they take up the practices of idol worshippers, or they start manipulating people financially, etc. We must believe the words of Jesus that God our Father will avenge us speedily, that God is not slow or slack concerning his promises. To be continued.